Hello, uh, thank you for the great response to yesterday's short video. Uh, we'll give a little clip of some uh, writing from Wilson and Blackett. Whoops. Uh, went down very well. Got a great reaction. So uh, I'll do some more of them. Much easier for me to do as well. So uh, and it keeps everyone up to date and reminds us uh, a lot of why we're here. So what I have here is a page from uh, the amazingly typed notes <laughs> about uh, the Maddock migration to uh, North America. So from Wales to North America in the 6th century, probably around about the 560s, the migration, the final one, maybe the 570s. We're talking that kind of period. Uh, working on a book that'll be out hopefully uh, soon and get together all the evidence and making that into... Um, there's, there's lots of it. There's, there's quite a bit that was in King Arthur Conspiracy and research since then has added a lot more. So this is quite a nice little summary page, which I thought I'd share with you. Okay, so now reading directly from the notes. Whether one of Arthur's or Maddox's ships floundered in one of the creeks near the falls of the Ohio, and if found, can yield timber from Britain, which might be radiocarbon-14 dated, or dendrochronological, looking at the tree rings, evidence, from tree ring circles is still to be seen. Whether or not a coffin of American wood is found in Wales, where Arthur lies buried, remains to be seen. According to the many interlocking records, the corpse should be wrapped in three deer skins, and these should be from American deer species and not British. Perhaps the jawbone in the Smithsonian from Grave Creek is Maddox or a near relative. In this case, the DNA should match the DNA of family members in Britain. King Tudric, the grandfather of Malik, has been exhumed twice, and his coffin is in a precisely known spot. The implication being we can get the DNA. One of the Uthapen dragons lies in the low mound at Caer Caradoc, and is almost certainly Uther, Arthur Uthapen dragon, the brother of Madoc, which offers another DNA matching opportunity. If it is Myrick Uther Pendragon, the father of Madoc, then the opportunity to match DNA remains. Even the tomb mound of Morgan Moinvaur, reputed son of Madoc Morfrad, is known. Artifacts of many varied kinds give mute comparative evidence, but DNA is without doubt conclusive. There is, therefore, a long way to go in this investigation, which is by no means over, but instead barely begun. Jim Michael and his colleagues of the Ancient Kentucky Historical Association still work on. They attempt to get DNA analysis done on the one known remaining mummy found in Kentucky. They know the location of the two teenage skeletons dug up in Kentucky and rough dated to around 800 AD, both of European type, both suffering from syphilis. Alan Wilson has found a major Cumric poem of the 6th century dealing with this type of plague affliction. Triple-headed carvings and vases of pottery, some with inscriptions, are being compared in Britain and the USA. Chunky stones with Owen signs must mean something, particularly as they were used in the process of spinning for weaving, and the Native Americans did not weave cloth. Yet the mummies in America were wrapped in cloth. <coughs> So, perhaps the trail of Maddock is not completely cold and lost. For the first time, those who search know who they are looking for. They know the dating, and they know something of the religion, and certainly they know the language and the alphabet. The mathematics of the mound circles, squares and octagons is known, and again, comparison with ancient British sites and measurements is underway. There are all manner of areas to be researched, including early mining activities. Um, I think this is probably written early 90s or even the 80s. Sadly, since then, Jim Michael has passed away. Uh, we still got Lee Pennington and others working at the ancient Kentucky Historical Association, and we wish them well. But despite all these possibilities being available, <laughs> in a normal, fair world, all the things listed in there, the DNA comparisons, looking at the timber, all that should be easy to do. Um, <laughs> as you might know if you've uh, followed Britain's hidden history for a while, you, 
in fact it turns out to get access to any of this stuff or any of the equipment you need to test it is almost impossible. Now, ain't that a strange thing? Until the next time, Hebu.